Hey, if baking's a science, how come Einstein never had a famous chocolate chip cookie recipe? Yeah, what if the MC in E equals MC squared stands for like milk chocolate? Well, cookies sure give me energy. This, this is, is a hot, hot dog, dog is a sandwich. sandwich. Ketchup is a smoothie. Yeah, I put ice in my cereal, so what? That makes no sense. A hot dog is a sandwich. A hot dog is a sandwich. <laughs> what? <laughs> Welcome to our podcast, A Hot Dog is a Sandwich, the show where we break down the world's biggest food debates. I'm your host, Josh Sher. And I'm your host, Nicole Inaidi. And we have a very special guest joining us mm-hmm. today. She's the queen of easy peasy baking and the author of the brand new cookbook, Salty, Cheesy, Herby, Crispy, Snackable Bakes. Mm. Please welcome <laughs> Jesse Sheehan. It is a mouthful of a title. It is such a mouthful, and I've gotten a lot of sugar from saying, <laughs> from, from writing a title quite that long, but it's very descriptive. I think it's it's great. I think it's fabulous. Thank and you. you know, what's wrong with it being a mouthful? I don't think there's a problem with right. it at all. I'm calling it, like, I've already given a cute little nickname, like it's a kid. So I'm calling it Salty Cheesy. Nice. Oh, right. that's so funny. Uh, Shorthand. Creedence Clearwater Revival, right? They gave themselves a super long name because they thought it would help them stand out on radio. So it would take the jo- the DJ's extra time. But then they just shortened it to CCR immediately, mm. thus working against their original plan. Ah. Mm. I'm not sure what my original plan was, except (laughs) that I thought it would be really, really, like, um, descriptive of what I was trying to do with this book. But I kind of like that. Now I'm just a salty, cheesy girl. You are salty. We're salty, cheesy girls, too. C-H-C- SB. Oh, oh my that's, God. That's, that's not another physics formula, is it? I just formula, say that that flows <laughs> off the tongue. Absolutely flows off the tongue. And after today, when you hear about my book, that's what you're going to hear. S-C-H-C-H-C-H-O-T-T-O-G-O. Sheehan? The author of S-C-H-C? There's a whole TikTok dance to go with it. It's going to be great. 100%. And there's going to be swag. Hilarious. We are so glad to have you today because we are discussing a topic we've been meaning to discuss for a long time. It is a common adage that people say that, you know, cooking is art, but baking is science. Yes. And I love that you just said adage. Adage. Yeah. It's not adage. It's adage. Yeah. No, I love that. I probably would have said adage. It's Um, adage. You know what? I heard somebody say adage recently and I was like, what a pretentious piece of crap. And then I suddenly just came out of my mouth. I think that shows, yeah, more about me than anybody else. I love it. I love it. Yes, yes, yes. This is a really, really good topic. And I'm really excited to tell you guys what I happen to think. Okay. Okay. You guys ready? Absolutely. Sure. Okay, so here's the thing. I actually don't even like science, and I don't even like math, but I really, really love baking, and baking does require both mm-hmm. things. Mm-hmm. However, it is the kind of science that you can also be, like, super creative with. So, like, okay. this idea that, like, cooking is art and that baking is science, I am here to say, how about baking is a little arty and a little sciencey or a little scientific? Okay. And, and this is why I think so. Because, yes, 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 there are, like, certain chemical reactions, there are certain physical reactions, there are certain even biological, like, if you think about yeast, Mm -hmm. reactions, and that all sounds, like, very sciencey and a little bit scary. However, there is also all this creativity with, like, the different ingredients that Mm -hmm. you use or the different flavors that you want to incorporate. So I'm kind of going with, like, a, like, arty science, like, kind of, like, a really cool nerd. That's how oh. I think of science. You, I mean, that's why I, what I think of baking. Mm-hmm. Like, that, like, you know, like, let your freak flag fly. Mm-hmm. I feel sure. like that's the bakers, right? Like, yes, we're sciencey. Yes, we're nerdy. But, like, look how creative and cool we are, too. Yeah, sure. you're like the band kids letting the freak flag fly out there. Totally. <laughs> yeah, and I know also, a lot of freaky bakers. And also, <laughs> don't you think that those kids are, like, really, like, in high school, maybe nobody likes them. Mm-hmm. But, hello, they kill it in real life. 100%. So true, Remember, right? uh, sure t- 10th grade. Uh, lead tuba player. She shaved her head. And everyone was scared, scared of her. But like, I was like, hey, I think she's pretty cool for yeah, that. Exactly. You know I mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Totally sure, had sure, a crush sure. on her exactly. after she shaved her head. And I just have to say one more thing about science. <laughs> yes. You had a crush on her. After yeah, 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 yeah. I think she's got a couple kids now. She's doing great. I love that. You know, we all found Aww. our ways in life. But. Um, I love that. Um, but the other thing I was going to say is the weird thing about me is that I. And I think this is the other reason why baking can have a bad, like, rap and why people think, Mm -hmm. oh, my gosh, it's like it's a science. Yuck. People always say, oh, I hate baking. It's so scientific. But I'm like a weird nerd, Mm -hmm. and I actually love, like, everything to be really black and white. I know that's not – It makes me, like, not that interesting because, like, 
people want to be like living in the gray. But I really, that's kind of what I love about mm-hmm. baking is that it is like prescribed in sure. a certain way. And sure. that like, I don't know, makes me feel safe. I don't know. Sure. Um, I find baking to be more of like, going back to like kids, oddly enough, it's like someone who follows the rules really well, I think is what baking is. Like someone who is very structured and understands that what an eighth of a teaspoon is, it's not a suggestion, it's an actual written recipe. So in that world, I think it is a science because you have to be very regimented and you have to know when to add what. The temperatures matter. The whatever kind of a leavener you're using matters. I think with cooking, you can get a little bit loosey or goosier with it. And certainly I, there's an intersection with like cooking and baking. Sure, it's, it's a bit of a false dichotomy. But well, cooking is also a science. You're using heat sure. and ingredients to make a final product. So that's science too. Mm. But baking, there there's steps and there's actual procedure mm-hmm. that matters. With cooking, I think you can get a little bit more wild with it. I agree. I yeah. was thinking about this earlier, Mm -hmm. and I was thinking about tomato sauce, and I was thinking about, like, what could you possibly mess up with tomato sauce that would be so bad it would be like a cake (laughs) not rising? Right. And the answer was nothing except the way Mm. it tastes, or if you burnt it, but I don't think we're counting Or what happens, is there something like you can't cook tomatoes in copper or something? Cast Ah, iron, the the acid degrades. That's what they say, right? Even then, then, whatever. (laughs) I only found that out because I did it and someone commented, you can't do that. And I was like, what if I told you I did? Yeah, like I'm still alive to tell the tale. (laughs) Like if you didn't put oregano in your tomato sauce, or you didn't put but even if the recipe said like seven cloves of garlic and you put one, it still could be really delicious totally. and totally work. Right. Whereas in baking, if somebody said like, to your point, a tablespoon of baking powder and you're like, I'm in the mood for a quarter teaspoon. <laughs> yeah, that, like, that would be like really sad. Well, yeah. yeah, it does lead to a lot of hilarious comments on especially the New York Times cooking oh my uh, gosh. page. Yeah, gosh. yeah, yeah. I remember reading one where somebody was trying to make, I don't know if it was a chocolate mousse, I think it was actually it was brownies, and they, you know, gave the recipe one star and they said, This didn't set up, it ruined my night. I hate you, go to hell. I did substitute Ovaltine chocolate milk yeah. mix for the chocolate chips, though. There you go. But other than that, I followed everything. So you're right, there's no conduit like that for tomato 100%, sauce. 100 percent And can I just say how much pleasure I get in a kind of creepy, weird way when I read those things and people have literally <laughs> changed every... It's like, it's so extreme, it's almost comical. Have you guys seen the carrot cake kale one? What? That oh is the gosh. most famous one. <laughs> yes. That no. is the, I, I didn't have carrots, so yeah, I, yeah. I used kale. And yeah, yeah. And like, oh, work. there was so much sugar in the original recipe. I cut it down by like 40%. And we're right. like, what are you doing? Right. Wait, hear me out there. Right. Hear me out. I... Love that. And to me, like, so, okay, the carrot cake example is a what great What do you love about it? A great example. So we all know that uh, restaurants are in, you know, a dire need of uh, repair the entire culture, the monetary structure, all that. Um, pastry chefs are kind of on their way out because a lot of restaurants can't afford to have them. Mm-hmm. I worked with a chef who had to get rid of his pastry chef, and he started doing the desserts. And he made this dessert that changed the way that I thought about all desserts and baking oh my specifically. Gosh, tell, tell, tell. So he was uh, basically took a carrot cake recipe and he subbed in zucchini for the carrots. Mm. However, because of a lifetime of cooking knowledge, he knew that if I use zucchini, obviously zucchini bread is a thing, uh, but he was like, you just need to wring the moisture out of the zucchini, maybe salt it a little bit to, you know, draw it out, and that creates a reverse osmotic, yada, yada. You can use all the sciencey words you want, but if you're a chef, you just know that wring some water out of the zucchini. Right. Yeah. You can talk about the science all day. But he did that, and then he made a zucchini mousse, and then he made like a – you know, zucchini sabayon, and he did Does his dad everything. own a zucchini farm? Know, well, Does it was, he love zucchini or what? It was summer, and so yeah. he, his whole thought process, and I really identify with this, yeah. was like, I know how to make a good carrot or a good squash cake for fall, and I know a lot of fall squash is used in baking. Why not a summer squash? Love it. Which is a zucchini or a, or a mm-hmm. spring squash, you know? Mm-hmm. And it was incredible. Yeah. And so for me, like, I think the science of it gets a little overblown in the sense that this table is science. There's cellulose uh, that's stacked up, giving it structure. This microphone is science. Every single thing. I am thing. science. You are science, Nicole. There's <laughs> billions of interactions going on within you, but you don't have to like live within that realm per se. I would argue baking is more architecture than anything. Ooh. In a sense. There's science behind architecture, of course, or, or construction. There's more math. You're building a building, you know. It's math. Right. Because it's about the, the different ingredients and the way that they are going to build the thing or the mm. way that they are going to come together to be the thing. that Like flour brings structure. Eggs bring exactly. moisture. Uh, sugar brings moisture but also sweetness. Mm. Uh, fat brings flavor. I, I feel you. Because even when you're talking about you. recipes not – 
uh, working out because of substitutions, right. the main fault seems to be structural, right? Yeah. Like if you substitute the, 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 time, the yeah. chocolate milk powder instead of the chocolate chips, that's because chocolate chips are solid and hard at room temperature and provide structure in recipes. Mm -hmm. It's why you can't uh, use substitute sh uh, artificial sweeteners or sugar. Right. Because literally the C6H12O6 C6 molecule of glucose, like – actually has a structure to it and it changes with different heats so like you have to know that but to me that's less chemistry and more like i need to know how to mix this mortar properly yeah so the bricks stick together for my building i had mm. a i had an interesting experience when i was writing this um book that i call s c h c s b correct i don't know if you guys have heard about it <laughs> I'll be sending you guys T-shirts, don't worry, in case you forget. But anyway, that's the swag that's coming. But what I found that was really interesting when I was writing this book, it's my first foray into savory baking because, mm -hmm, like, I'm cool. a sweet baker because I love sugar. I'm mm -hmm. like a sugar person. Mm -hmm. And I realized in a lot of the recipes that I really needed to add sugar, mm -hmm. even though I was like, what? What? Why would I put sugar in my muffins? This, this is like I have this incredible, like, hot pepper jelly and cream cheese stuffed muffin. Well, the muffin no. itself has, like, not a lot, maybe three mm -hmm. tables spoons of sugar, but I realized you need it for moisture mm -hmm. and you need it for color mm -hmm. because savory baked uh, – we don't realize how much sugar is bringing in terms of looks. Okay. Mm. And when I was doing all of these savory recipes that didn't have – any sugar in them, it, it, things were very brown. Right, right, right. Nothing against brown. Love brown. Brown's but I wanted a little bit more. And yeah. the sugar mm. did that. I thought that was so interesting. I was going to ask you whenever you're um, you're writing a baking book and you're, you know, you're recipe testing, I was going to ask you how many times do you go through a recipe and you're like, I'm going to add a quarter teaspoon of baking soda here. I'm going to add an eighth of a teaspoon of baking soda here. I'm going to add baking powder instead. How Do you do that in your process? So I... I'm hoping that no one has ever listened to this podcast because I'm going to come out and say something like really like top <laughs> secret and that and that you should never do. It, what you're talking about, I think, is like mm -hmm. this idea that when you're testing a recipe, it's mm -hmm. like for like a cookbook particularly. I mean, online you you could always change it if there mm -hmm. was a mistake. Right. But if you're something that's in a cookbook in or in a or in a, in a magazine, which are kind of are dying. Poor magazines. Mm -hmm. But oh, anyway, but anyway. The idea is that if you if something is not right with the recipe you're developing, you can only change one thing mm -hmm. at a time. Mm -hmm. Because the idea is if you're like, oh, I'm not really enjoying this. I think I'm going to add citrus, baking powder, a teeny bit of soda, bring down the – like you'll never know unless it's perfect. And then you're like, right. I'm a genius. But if it's not perfect, you're like, oh, my gosh. Like which thing – and I should be doing that. Like I should only change one thing right. at a time. And some, I'm so impatient. I'm a weird – I'm like a weird lover of like routine, rigidity, black and white, mm -hmm. and I'm also like wildly impatient. <laughs> sure, that's fine. So yes, that is exactly what you're supposed to do. Do one tiny thing at a time. Mm, right. I tend to be a little bit more like, oh, maybe I could change seven things. <laughs> and uh, um, but yes, that and and you will see like if you're developing something, let's say, and like a muffin, just to use that as an example, mm -hmm. um, and you're finding like, gosh, this is yummy, but like the the muffin, the cakey part of this muffin feels like a little dense. Like how can I lighten right. it? Then you'd be like, I don't want to add a ton of leavening, but what about if I just add like an eighth of a teaspoon right. of baking soda or a little bit of baking powder? That's also like not to get too nerdy. but No, it's I fine. Already, I love it. I love hearing you talk about it. I already it. said I'm like an arty nerd science yes, hater yes, yes. but also lover. So anyway, <laughs> it, I, like all, all bets are off now. But the other thing that's really interesting and, and trips people up a lot I think is with baking soda and baking powder because – happens all the time. You can – baking powder – a teaspoon of baking powder will leaven a cup of flour. A quarter teaspoon of soda will leaven a cup of flour. Mm -hmm. However, if you have an acid, in acidic ingredient like buttermilk, let's say, or like Dutch processed cocoa in the recipe, you're going to need a teeny bit of soda to help um, deal with that acidic right. ingredient, blah, blah, blah. So that kind of stuff is both like really kind of weirdly fun and you feel like very mathy and smart, like, oh, mm -hmm. I know what I need to do. And also really frustrating and annoying because you're like, why doesn't this taste the way it's supposed to taste? They did. Because can I just say one thing? Yes. This is the course. You have a microphone. <laughs> say whatever you want. Take your mic. You have the mic. You have I'm the worried. floor. I'm worried. I feel like I need to hold it. No, you have comes. it. You okay, have good. it. She's filibustering uh, on the floor again. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the other thing I was going to say that is um, that is 
this is why it is science, but it's not. Like I just gave you those like one teaspoon of flour, leavens, one couple. Mm-hmm, those parameters. But uh-huh. you'll see like recipe writers like put two teaspoons of baking yeah. powder mm-hmm. and yet they only have one and a half cups of flour. And the the like kind of like rule follower in me finds that really hard. Sure. Because I'm just like, why did they do that? Like I have to understand. Yeah. Um. Yes, I have to understand why they did that, and I really want to know. I mean, you kind of sound a little bit like a scientist when you went off on that Ooh, baking. When yeah. you went, you sound when like you a hit. bad scientist, though. Yeah. You're like, I changed seven variables, well, no, so now I have. Then, whenever you were talking about the baking powder and the baking soda and one cup, I mean, you sounded like someone who really values yeah. the science of baking. Yeah, yeah. you know what For she s- sounds like, though. What yeah. sounds like a baker? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which right. Is but kind but of that's a scientist. Yeah, I, I think yeah. it's. I think there's a fascinating mix of. There is hard science because yep. there's hard science behind everything, but this yep. is all institutional knowledge, right? Yep. You know that because you've done it. Yep. And I think that's, that's the key. That's okay. um, Hypothesis. I, what do you mean institutional knowledge as opposed to what other kind of knowledge? What do you mean? So if you have merely read in a book right. that one teaspoon of right. baking powder, powder runs runs that, yep, yep. Um, that, that's one thing. But if you have actually seen it in practice over and over and over uh-huh. and also then done that with combining it with, you know, um, acidic ingredients, yep. like you know that because you've done it and you've seen the effects. So yep. You can then like estimate using heuristics and knowledge that you've had from the past yep. in that. And so I think knowing the hard science behind stuff, there's like uh, The Food Lab by by Kenji Lopez. Yep. Right. Is, sure. I know so many people that love that book. And I think it's an incredible book. I think he's an incredible cook. It's not the way that I learn. Right. I don't need to know the fundamental science behind it. I need to know that I treat it like algebra in a sense. Right. Algebra, it's such a simple form of math. I hate math. <laughs> that really it like But I, go ahead, go ahead. I when people say they never use algebra in their yeah. adult life, I'm like, I use it every single day. But can you remind me what's algebra and when I'm using it? <laughs> sure, like if I use sure. it today, will you please tap I, me I think it? there's numbers and letters in well, algebra. It's just it's how different variables <laughs> affect a solution. Okay. And it's it's very linear, right? It's just like, uh, what is it, y equals mx plus b yeah, or something or other. Yeah, slope-intercept form, buddy. Right, but you're using, like, <laughs> uh, just the idea of what happens when you change one variable to the final solution. Okay. And then yes. what happens when you multiply that? What happens when you add things separately? To me, like, a cocktail is a great example yeah. of uh, a Negroni. It's equal parts gin, vermouth, and Campari. Okay. Right? So that's like, you know, uh, x, y, and z all have the same quantities. And x is a bitter liqueur. Y is a fortified wine, and then Z is spirit, right? Well, what if we change – what if we add a different number in front of that Z? What if we start playing with the quantities of this thing? Maybe I like a little bit more vermouth, so now we're going to add like, okay, that's uh, 2 X, or yeah, 2 Y, 1 X, 1 Z. And you start like changing Josh is it. doing air math, everybody. <laughs> Josh is doing math in the air. But, and then you, you go, well, Campari is a bitter I liqueur. Let's add saying. another yeah. bitter liqueur to it. And then if that's a little bit too, you know, too sweet, then you start changing the other variables. But to me, it's like a building block of a yeah. foundation of how you view any sort of recipe. Baking does get a little bit more complicated, Harry, though, yeah, uh, admittedly, because I used to do something that I called free baking. Ooh. That my <laughs> Did it involve algebra? No, it did okay. not. It involved me getting drunk at a bar and coming home and then combining different amounts of flour, fat, and uh, sugar to try and bake something without any sort of recipe, and then my hmm. ex-girlfriend would get really mad at me. And then would you would you then document that and be like, no. You nope, just none of it. For, you mm-hmm. just were like, this was really fun. It's just a vibe. Yep. It's yep. just a vibe. Yep. It's just a drunk drunk. If you're like, maybe I know vibe. how to make a Dutch baby yeah. today. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Let's, yeah. let's heat a bunch of fat in the oven as hot as I can in a cast iron pan and start While making drunk. Out. Let's make yeah. some funnel cakes. Crazy. Let's go to town, you yeah. know? Let's, uh, when I'm <laughs> drunk and I want a sweet, I just want, like, something that's already in the freezer, like ice cream. I want, like, a <laughs> piece of chocolate. Or I want cookies. I want a piece of chocolate. Yeah. I just I, want a big piece of chocolate, like, the size of my hand. But do you want it dark. to be milk chocolate or dark, dark. chocolate? Dark. Oh, I want it to be milk chocolate. Really? I do love milk chocolate, I love though. milk chocolate A so handful much. of milk chocolate chips on a bad day. Ooh. Woo! The day gets <laughs> so <laughs> much With better. With a little bit of peanut butter? I'll, I'll do it. Yeah. Okay. I'll see. I'll meet you halfway. Okay. Okay, good. Also, can I say that I love Oreo? Oreos. Sure. And, oh, yeah. Oreos are science. That might be something. Yeah, Oreos are 100% science, and that might be something that I would eat if I w- came home and was drunk. And Inebriated? Was, uh, yeah, and I was not going to um, be trying to make a recipe. I would no, be no, eating no. Oreos and maybe ice cream. Oreos really are science, though. Oreos, think about it. Oreos think really about, are science. They the really se- are science. Think about them. And their the politics. cookie itself and the and the cream itself separately. The cream is so sweet, it's almost offensive. And the dark chocolate cookie is so bitter, it almost tastes like dirt. 
But when you combine the two together, what a harmonious, delicious hypothesis we have. It's incredible. And can Science. I just can I just say that there was this chocolate wafer cookie that people used to make chocolate cookie crumb crust with. You know when sure, you get sure, a cream sure. pie and there's like a cookie mm. crumb? Yeah, sure. And it was by Nabisco and it was called the Nabisco chocolate wafer and everyone made icebox oh, cakes with it, et cetera, et cetera. Nabisco stopped carrying it. Mm. And I am here to say that an excellent, excellent substitute for the Nabisco chocolate wafer is an Oreo cookie crust. We're talking about nine ounces, like two cups of the of Oreos. I mean, Oreos aren't really cups, but you know what I mean. <laughs> now, let, let's weigh them. Nine ounces of Oreos <laughs> and about like five tablespoons of melted butter. Okay. Oh, my God. In the food processor. Institutional knowledge. I love oh it. Oh, my God. <laughs> so delicious. So that's my little shout out for Oreos. At, yeah, there they are. There they are. Yeah. Wait, How, t- yeah. T- t- turn me computer. There they are. The, those were discontinued. Is it? I mean, is it literally just the cookie part of an Oreo? Yes. I mean, it's much skinnier. <laughs> I can see. Um, it's a and, wafer. And like, guys, have you ever had an icebox cake? Because that would be sad if you have not. I don't think I've ever had oh an icebox gosh. cake. Oh, no, unless we would have made it for the show. I don't mm-hmm. think I ever would have had oh it. Oh, my gosh. I needed to bring you are one they, today. Are they frozen fully? So, no. It's actually my first book was called Icebox Cakes. Nice. And so I'm kind of, like, can we just say expert? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. We can talk. Okay, we can. Well, absolutely. Okay, graphic on this okay good. Yeah, yeah, good. And then like pointing <laughs> Blinking, to me. Because uh-huh. I don't want them to think <laughs> no, you no, know. No, no, no. We don't lie. We'll we don't lie to the public. We'll have, like, right here. Dumbass above our heads. Yeah, perfect. Pointing <laughs> perfect. Yeah. This yeah. podcast <laughs> is about being honest and yeah. truthful. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, an icebox cake, oh my gosh. Basically, in its in its purest and most simplest form, is literally like a crispy cookie mm-hmm. and whipped cream. And you layer them in whatever vessel you want to layer in and then stick it in the fridge for maybe four hours, maybe six hours. The cookie part absorbs the moisture from the cream and turns cake-like. And it it, I wonder if it's like an East Coast, West Coast thing, do you think? Maybe. I feel like, when do you think, think icebox cakes peaked in time? Well, they, I think they started maybe in the 50s. Icebox mm. makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah, a, yeah. a retro yes, yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. But they are so delicious. And then you can do other fun things, like you can layer the cookies, but you could use pudding, you can use graham crackers, mm-hmm. you could put like a layer of caramel, you could put yeah. a little jam. I believe they the Italians are, call it tiramisu. I made a tiramisu for Rosh Hashanah, and let me tell you, it was fire. (laughs) But it's kind of like somewhat the same, you know. What? Uh, Yes. Same texture You're so not wrong because it's like lady fingers Mm -hmm. and cream. 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 Put a little bit of custard in there. Yeah, 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 so good. A little bit of liquor. Um, can you tell me about the recipe? <laughs> sure. So what I did was did you I make did, it up. I no 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 okay. I did I okay. it was derived from an online recipe. Okay. I took my lady fingers. I bought the lady fingers. I'm not making my own lady fingers. But I have then a you put zucchini in there. <laughs> no. <laughs> you would think. But I I brewed my own espresso. I have a little Breville espresso machine. I like put like four shots and then I took Liqueur 43. I believe it's oh, called. Oh yeah. Because um I was on a Carajillo kick for a while, so mm. I was like screw it, let's use that instead of like mid what did they use? Marsala mm-hmm. or like Kahlua. Yeah, like, yeah. screw it, let's do it. So I used that and then I made my um, my filling, I guess you can say. Yeah. So I had a few pregnant people at my Rosh Hashanah. So I temp- I tempt my egg yolks and I cooked mm-hmm. them to make sure that they were. Is it like a sabayon? Yeah, that- it was. It basically turned into a sabayon because I use, I put sugar in there. Yep. So I whipped it up nice and I then mean, I you put. Said- can I just say you sound very expert? I wrote I'm a children's getting... b- baking book during during the pandemic. Oh what, what, what? Bury the lead. I know, right? Oh <laughs> I'm here pretending I know what I'm expert, doing. Expert, expert. <laughs> on here. Algebra expert. Algebra. Algebra Air expert. Algebra expert. Yeah. Oh my gosh, honey! Yeah, incredible. Thanks, thanks. And then I did uh, like two tubs of mascarpone. I did hand whipped cream with some vanilla paste. Some yeah. I, there's actually when you a say hand whipped, you mean you did? Yeah, it yeah, yeah. Because you didn't want to dirty your stand mixer. I might, yeah, my stand mixer was. I don't but know. But I love broken. you for that because I Thanks. hate one of my one of my things is being is baking easy. Yeah. And one of the easy things that I like to do is not use any special equipment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I love that. Same, Sorry same. to interrupt. Sorry no, to you're interrupt. fine. And then um, I folded that all in. Actually, there's a lot of salt in um, tiramisu. Like I put a lot of salt in mine mm. to balance it all out because it's so bitter from the coffee and love. all the all the cocoa powder. So I do cocoa powder. I do my uh, soaked lady fingers, and then I put my cream, and then I did another layer of it, and then I finished finished it with my cocoa powder and then I put little pomegranate seeds and little broccoli sprouts and it looked like little flowers. Oh my gosh, broccoli on your tiramisu. I wish I had, do I have my, I'll show you. You poop through the zucchini okay. and you use the broccoli. But you can't even taste it. It's, it's micro broccoli sprouts and they looked like little, it looked like leaves. Right, we have to take a short break and talk about 
your book? It was a really cool <laughs> book. It's called Bake Up. I wrote it during the pandemic. Um, I did 60 recipes in four months, and Honey, it was really crazy. Amazing. Thank you. It was really fun. I did it all in my mom's kitchen um, during the pandemic. Um, it was very fast and very cool. And so all yeah. recipes, like, aimed at kids? All aimed at kids, all easy. We, we did um, everything from, like, homemade granola yeah. to, like, cream puffs at the end. Honey. Yeah, it was really cool. Yum and love. And also, <laughs> even though I write books for adults, that's kind of how my books are. <laughs> it's, I Start swear. with granola and with a cream Yeah, puff. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you basically learn um, everything in between. And it was a very fun experience. And it was really cool. And I'm very lucky I got to. Honey, I love that story it. so oh much. Oh, my God. Thanks so much. It was yeah. really hard, though, like yeah. pumping out a bunch of recipes like in a day while also like working from home for the show that we do like it was mm. hard can i also say that th- w- this is another thing that i realized when writing a savory baking book mm-hmm. which is really cool because it's like sometimes dinner is a galette because it's mm. part in your savory right, right, when right. you are writing a sweet book which i'm sure you experience mm-hmm. All you do is eat sweets. <laughs> like oh, it's, all, it's kind of even though I love yeah. sweets so so much and I don't want sweets to have hurt feelings, it's kind of gross. Like yeah. literally you have like six cakes and four cookies and <sighs> and then you taste them. People always ask me like how do you taste everything and like what is that experience like? And I always say, like, if the recipe is really good, like if I'm if I kind of hit it off the mark, yeah. then I'm like, oh, I'll just take a little taste and I'm done. Right. If it is bad, you got to keep. I eat it. the entire thing as punishment. I, it's I, like self flagellation. I'm really yeah. mad at myself, and so I'm just gonna be like, eat this. Oh, really? I'm eating it so I can find out what's wrong with it because I'm confused why <laughs> I got so mad. Me too, but then I'm also sad. Yeah, so sure, it's sure. a mixture. <laughs> it's a mixture. Josh actually told me the other day. He's like, hey, why didn't you bring me any desserts while you were testing for Ooh, your baking book? Do you remember that? You told me that, like, that? like two weeks ago. You told me, and I'm like, you live far away from me. My feelings must have been heard about something yeah. else, and I was just trying really? to start a fight. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. I say it's totally reasonable. That you or you were just trying to get an apology. It wasn't even you. Were trying to get a fight. I'm so sorry. Yeah. If you're I wasn't, it wasn't the you. sweets. It was about you caring about me, really. Oh. You know? <laughs> you're saying I don't? I totally do. <laughs> At that moment, it's like a lemon bar would have showed it. That's all yeah. I'm saying. You know? <laughs> and some of that tiramisu with broccoli on it. I, I bet Josh would have loved that. I should have. I should have. But yeah. You think um, I can make ladyfingers from scratch without a recipe just by vibing it right now? <laughs> I was just going to ask if you had made the ladyfingers from scratch. I've but yes, made them before. It's just flour, egg, white, sugar, right? I don't, I don't know. know. Uh, like off the top of my head. I'm I have another free think. baking challenge coming up. Oh, oh no. Gosh. I could not. <laughs> I've tried it once and it was so abhorrent and embarrassing. Can't do it ever I again. I think the problem with making ladyfingers from scratch, I have done it. I do not remember all of the ingredients, but all I will say is it's really hard to pipe them and get them to look good. Technique-based. Yeah. They it's technique might based. Not all ladies Tasty. have straight, beautiful fingers. Exactly. It's like a lady WNBA player who's like yeah. broken her fingers. Gnarled fingers. You know, in like pass lane, intercepting passing lanes. 100%. You know? 100%. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> they shouldn't. They don't need to be uniform. Can't no. we just celebrate that every – look at our fingers. Diversity. We have like Honestly, really different fingers. Messed up. But they're all beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Pinkies don't go close to straight. That's the yeah. shape of lady finger. I'm Josh, for. yeah, hold your pinky out straight. I'm trying. I'm, I'm <laughs> Josh, is that because of a broken finger? Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. This yes. one too. Both of them. Aww. Sports, man. Aww. So, my friends, what do we think? Is baking science? I'd say heck yeah, but it's a cool science. Yes. Everything science. I science. You science. We all science <laughs> for science. <laughs> science for the win. <laughs> All right, Nicole and Jesse, <laughs> I've immediately adopted a 1930s radio <laughs> announcer voice. Uh, <laughs> we've heard what you and I have to say. Now it's time to find out what other wacky idiots are rattling out there in the universe. It's time for a little segment we call Opinions are like casseroles. That up. And she's a cookbook writer. <laughs> she is really amazing. <laughs> she can do it all. I contain multitudes. <laughs> uh, you should see her at karaoke. Well, last time oh. I saw her, she was Nicole. What were you doing last time? Um, I was. I had a few bottles of lychee soju, <laughs> and I was rolling around on the floor singing mm-hmm. "Loneliest Day." Right, oh, "Lonely honey. Day" by System of a Down. System of a Down. Yeah, I have some on the alone? floor, honey. On alone or was that no? My husband. Oh, was, no, no, oh, good. My husband I, I was, was there to take with pictures. Me. Okay, and he was there. Okay, Maggie good. was there. Okay, good. It was a good time. I got time. worried because I was just picturing you like sad. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I was with friends. I was. It was literally the week after we met too. It was. Uh, it was at the oh, VidCon weekend, which was after. <laughs> oh, that was a wedding. So it was a busy time. Yeah, a good There was a lot going on. Crazy time. Ready to get to that first opinion? Okay. What is the difference between? 
raw cane sugar uh-huh. and brown sugar because I've just been using it in bacon. Oh, I love and this. I've just been using it in bacon, not knowing the difference. Also, why was gruel really pop? Like gruel, gruel, gruel. How do you say gruel? Well, gruel, gruel de vil. Why was gruel <laughs> so popular around the world? Mm. Ooh. Like essentially, it's just like cooked grains, man. Right? Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh! Why was it so popular? Yeah. Uh, uh, Why was it so popular? This person Thank is you. a genius. First of all, I love <laughs> that you can go from cane sugar to gruel mm-hmm. in one comment or Natural phone message. Yeah, yeah. yeah mm-hmm. really nice. I really loved how that flowed. Um, I'm gonna go with. Um, I'm I am surprised that there are recipes out there calling for cane sugar in a way. It's definitely different than brown sugar. I think I think of cane sugar as more of like a raw sugar. It's not turbinado sugar. Mm. It's not sugar I in think, the raw. I, I know what it sugar. is. I think she's talking about white I think they're talking about white sugar. Oh she I, is. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So oh, oh. cane sugar is from sugar cane and then what we get in America normally white sugar is from beets. Mm, not true. That's, is that not true? Did I get that wrong? Oh wait. Oh, maybe. Yeah, no, I think Sugar beets? Potentially. Maybe you are right. I think I'm right. But just a minute. So where do you get cane sugar? From sugar cane. No, no, I get that. But where? Like in the grocery store? Yeah. I think it says on the container cane sugar. Ah. And then the white sugar in America, I believe, is from beets. And then brown sugar is just either of those sugars mixed with molasses. 100% true. But Josh, let me know if I got the beet sugar, cane sugar thing I'm trying to look it up, but that would make sense because I always thought that yeah, cane sugar and white sugar were just interchangeable, but I, I suppose they're not because, like you said, sugar beets are a really popular way to, mm-hmm. like, get refined sugar in America. Mm-hmm. But I'm just confused. Is there a country somewhere where it's just cane sugar? And if you walked in and were like, where's the granulated sugar? They'd be like, what are you talking about? Mm. We only have cane here. Well, if you so if you, if you look at a lot of other country sugar, right, um, you go to Thailand, right? They yep. sell, like, palm sugar, right, which is, you know, uh, syrup. It's all just syrup that's been cooked down and evaporated until it's uh, able to Granular. be crumbled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so they have, like, palm sugar. So you can kind of make sugar out of a lot of different things, and they, like, certainly have. Um, but I don't think it's all sugar cane. I don't know about that. But, yeah, like you said, so brown sugar originally was, like, turbinado sugar or demerara, which is a, a more sugar in the raw yep. mm-hmm. capacity. Like, sugar shouldn't be white. It should have some sort of brown color to it. 100%. But we made so much lily white ultra refined cane sugar that it was then cheaper to just add back molasses to that and sell that as brown sugar. Oh, I didn't realize that was actually the journey as to how we Mm -hmm. got there because, and I want to say two things. First of all, are you guys going to fire me because I said cane sugar was raw sugar? No. (laughs) We're not going to fire you. They might roast the the, the people might roast you, but that's out of our control. On a performance improvement plan, (laughs) we'll track your progress for the next 30 days. No pips. Thank you. No pips. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. And then also what I was going to say is, you know what's kind of cool? You can actually like like make delicious brown sugar mm-hmm. with granulated sugar and molasses right. at home if you do not have brown sugar. And it's actually like soft and fluffy and delicious. And, right. And that's the end well, of my story. Well, let me ask you as a yeah. scientist. Yeah, so please. whenever I see – it's always weird because when I see uh, granulated sugar and brown sugar in a recipe, yeah. I'm like what you really just want ah. is slightly less brown sugar. Totally so, agree. so could you completely say a, a chocolate chip cookie, for instance, that normally uses a mix of brown and, and white? Yeah. Could you just use all white and then add, say, a teaspoon of molasses? Yes, you could. Sure. Right? Yes. I don't see right? why you Algebra. couldn't. You could. Although, do you think it's possible, fellow scientists? Do you think it's possible <laughs> that there is something that happens when you mix the molasses with the white sugar to get it into this kind of fluff? It's a, definitely a very different consistency. Mm-hmm. Do you think that could have any impact, or do you really think? It doesn't matter. In, since in its base form, it is just sugar and molasses, we can just throw in some molasses. Because you're absolutely right. Like, why are we telling people, oh, you ran out of brown sugar? Just add this and mix it together. And all you just say is, okay, add a teaspoon of molasses. Yeah, I know what you See mean. what I'm saying? If you're, so if you make tortillas, right? Yeah. Like, uh, the great technique is you add the lard or you can use butter, any hydrogenated fat. You add it to the flour, but then you have to work it with your hands Mm -hmm. to try and cover as much flour as possible with the fat because that inhibits gluten development. Yeah, like pie dough, same thing. Exactly like pie dough. And so, like, there are certain, again, like, kind of little architectural procedures, but I don't know if that would Uh, come into play with the the brown sugar. I don't know. Especially if you're beating it all up together. I know. I know. (laughs) I don't know. I can't tell you. I can't tell you. Okay. I think it needs to be a a test needs to be Also, can one of you weigh in on gruel? 
Oh, gr- oh, I love Gruel. I love Gruel. Come Josh on. is a Gruel guy. Why though? was Gruel so popular? It's all they had. You know, that's all they had. They had a little bit of grain and like a water that was safe when you boiled it. And so that was it. Um, the agricultural revolution ruined humans' diets. And then all they had was a little grain ration from whoever was growing it if it wasn't destroyed by blight or pests. And so, yeah, gruel is the cheapest, simplest way to feed a large amount of people. Josh's uh, drag name is Gruella DeVille. <laughs> That's why we both said it at the same time. Carry a bowl of barley Aww. porridge with me. <laughs> <laughs> Next one. Hey, Josh and Nicole. I just wanted to put you on to a little family tradition that we do every summer. So whenever we're having a campfire, instead of making traditional s'mores, what we do is we take those little cubed baking caramels that Kraft makes, Uh, put those puppies on a roasting stick, put them over the fire until they're nice and gooey, and then you take two Ritz crackers and, and sandwich the caramel together and the two Ritz crackers, and it makes the most delicious, salty and sweet snack that, in my opinion, is far superior to s'mores. It is seriously so good, and if you've never tried it, you got to give it a try. Okay, what? Godspeed. Wow, I thought that that was going in a very different direction. Mm-hmm. I was picturing a marshmallow filled with caramel. Mm. I thought you put the caramel on this, egg, then you put the marshmallow in, and yeah, yeah, it yeah. was all a thing, and yeah, then you yeah. had graham crackers. I really love Ritz crackers, mm-hmm, and I know it's off topic for two seconds. Can I just tell you yes, about the recipe? Yes, love tangents. Okay, good. In my new savory baking book, listen to this. You take a Ritz cracker. You put a briny slice of your favorite pickle on top. You take a piece of Monterey Jack cheese. Mm-hmm. You put that on top. You do this to like 20 Ritz crackers. You stick that in the oven for like five minutes. You pull that sugar out, and <laughs> it is so Un- so good. Does that sound so good or yeah. what? I okay. love I love warm pickle cheese sandwich right. situations. Doesn't so, yeah. that sound incredible? That's all they are I so wanted in my life. Yeah, thank you. That's all. I, okay. I, I want to not work and eat little pickle <laughs> s- sandwiches in my spare time. That's Me all too. I want in my life. Me too. I think you should be able to do that. I think that's an achievable goal. This is good. This is great. This is awesome. I, I think s'mores are one of the things that really could use some improvement. I've never quite understood uh, talking about architecture. You bite into a s'more, it just you know completely falls apart. The marshmallow is never hot enough to melt the chocolate, uh, or even bring the chocolate to like a, a temperature that I enjoy. Mm-hmm. Or it's burned to like a smithereen, and that's kind of yeah. nice, but not. But I think we're, we're due for a new um, heatable over a fire filling with a different cracker. And I think they found a hell of an option here. I like yeah. it. I think it needs another component. But Same. I'm trying to figure out what it is. is Potato it a- chip. <laughs> potato chip? Or is it? I thought you were going to say I, potato. <laughs> <laughs> Zucchini. <Nah. laughs> Zucchini. Yeah. I think Ritz cracker. Yeah. But that's the potato chip. That's the salt and the crunch. Well, what do you mean? You, there's different types of crunch. A wavy, salty potato. Okay. Okay. Hold on. What if it's one Ritz cracker and then it's the caramel and then it's it's the chip and that's it? There's no top Ritz cracker. Mm. Would that work? <laughs> Am I the only one who thinks we need a little? Because I love like chocolate and caramel. Nobody wants a little bit of melted chocolate. I'm done with chocolate. I'm over. out on chocolate. I'm done. I'm, I'm out on over chocolate. It. I'm done. I know we're just talking about eating a handful of it, but whatever. I out. think okay. Just I'm, caramel and Ritz. You don't think? What about done? white chocolate? I know. Ew. I know. It's just extra sugar, but then you're then you have a different textural component. Yeah, at least. Or or Ew. we're forgetting about a marshmallow. I'm worried that I'll be thirsty, but maybe that's not a problem. You know what? You know Does what? Does a s'more not make you thirsty? Not it. Why would a s'more make you very thirsty? hydrating? <laughs> <laughs> Like you're in a post-apocalyptic world, this? leaching water from the marshmallows no, in the store. No, no, no. I got it, friends. All you're going to do, you're going to take one of those mini baby bell cheeses, okay? You're going to Where's heat- this going? Wait. You're going to heat it on the s'more I'm going to heat that. And so just get rid of what this person said. Don't okay, even think okay. about it. Delete if I remember. We're back. You're okay. going to take a mini ba- baby bell cheese, the okay. one in the red thing, okay? You're going to put over that. You're going to take your Ritz cracker. You're going to take a pickle and a prosciutto. Wrap it all oh. up. Oh. And then that's going to be your new s'mores. It's going to be your savory s'mores <laughs> delight. And it's not, I'm not going to copyright it. I'm not going to trademark it. Like, okay. you can just do it. Can so I steal it you. and put it in my next book? No. Okay. Because can I just say <laughs> that melted, can I just say melted cheese on a stick? Yum. Is there anything better than melted cheese no, on a stick? No, no. That's, that's what we've been missing. We've been no. thinking, we need to think outside the box. S'mores don't need to be sweet. No. This is like a savory s'more revolution. Yes. Oh, that's interesting. Yes. Because a lot of people just, you roast a wiener over the fire. 
but then you don't upgrade it. You just let it stay as a wiener. But if we took that, like, speaking of algebra, yeah. <laughs> we love cured beets roasted over a fire. You know, add cheese to that, add a cracker. Cured beets? Cured meats. Oh, oh, I thought you oh, said meat. Be- yeah, yeah, yeah. I was really yeah. upset. Cured meats over a fire. Cured meats over a fire. The, the hot dog on a stick exists over a fire. Yes. Yeah. S'mores exist over a fire, but you take the architecture of a s'more with, you know, the ethos of loving a roasted cured meat. I think we found something good there. Savory s'mores. Savory s'mores. Yum. We're in. We're That's in. the future. <laughs> one more, Maggie. One, one more, two more. One more. Hi, Justin Nicole. This is Holly. I'm coming from Walkertown, North Carolina. Woo-hoo! And I'm just saying one of the best foods in the world <gasps> is a corn casserole. Oh. Now, let me tell you, a corn casserole oh, consists me. of the Jiffy cornbread, mm. some corn in a can, yep. cream cheese, butter, and sour cream. And Yum. you bake that yep. at 350 for 40 minutes, and let me tell you, you're oh going to have the best cornbread muffins in the world. You want Southern Southern? There you go. I love you guys. I hope you guys have a wonderful everything. Aww. Thank you for all you do. I love you. Aww. Thank you. We love you, too. Aww, I love There's you. a lot of love there. Yeah. Um, just a minute. That sounds amazing, but why does it have to be a muffin? I want it to be like in a nine by nine by two mm-hmm. inch you're square right. baking pan and you're like right. kind of almost like a little bit soft, almost like a spoon bread. You're right. You're <gasps> right. I was just gonna say correct. spoon bread. Correct. Yeah. God. Correct. Correct. Oh uh, this gosh. started to go viral on TikTok like three, four years ago. Did uh, it? People, they, they were calling it corn pudding, but it was very much a spoon yeah. bread. Yeah. And yeah, I, I made it for Thanksgiving. I wow. loved it. It's one of the best things in the world. So okay. yummy. Oh my gosh. I mean, I sound like sounds like I have to make it and eat it immediately. You do. With Ritz crackers. Also, um, I love cream cheese. Can I just go on the record? Cream cheese is like one of my favorite. If things. you feel comfortable cheese. going on the record, yeah, I do. Yeah, if you <laughs> I do. I want everyone to know I okay, love cream good. cheese. So when she said cream cheese, I got excited. Yeah, yeah. She's gonna say sleep on it, maybe. You know, have yeah, you guys heard about what is that? Neufenchel? Neufchatel. Neufchatel cheese. What is the the correlation between Neufchatel, whatever you just said, cheese, and cream cheese? It's not as good. Right? Yeah, it's yeah. literally low fat cream cheese is that was rebranded. Cream so I think yeah. cream cheese, I think Neufchatel is a town in Switzerland, I believe. Uh, or Maggie, it can, can you be fact check Look, that? Because I think Neufchatel is a town. I think they make a creamy cheese, but I yeah. think it was a way that American cream cheese companies could rebrand low fat cream cheese. Uh, it's N E U F. C H A T E L. Yeah, sorry, that was tough. That was tough. Oops. No, should tell where to buy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think that that's what I grew up understanding. It's a France. It's in France, yeah. Cool. Yeah, I was always I always saw it like in the stores, and I'm yeah. so glad I never picked it up. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> that's mm-hmm. what I want to talk about. Yeah. I don't like. Cream I don't cheese. think it tastes. You don't like cream cheese. I like it on a bagel. Do you like? I like it on a bagel. Cheese? I don't like cream cheese frosting. I just think about like, like an American cream buttercream. Cream? Yeah, always. no, I love American yeah. buttercream for life. Do you like whipped cream cheese? No, I hate whipped cream cheese. What? I love whipped cream cheese. <laughs> I don't hate it. I don't hate it, but I really do love cream cheese. Yeah. No yeah. man. Yeah. Yep. Sometimes it's too thick. Ooh. Just let it soften a little bit. Oh, I love the way you, you sling that over your shoulder. For emphasis. I love that you sling that over your shoulder like you're going out on the prairie. Oh, yeah, you know, tough day. Yeah, tough, tough day at day. work. Put my whip over my shoulder and I head out. Uh, Maggie, one, one more. more Maggie, Maggie, come on. on. Let's live a little bit. One more. Give us a, give us a juicy one. Give us a controversial one. Mm. Jesse can take it. Yeah, right. She can Hi, Josh and Cole. Oh. My name is David, and After I have two debate. opinions. <laughs> First of all, it is not hard to become a judge at a eating competition. I literally managed wow. to become the culinary judge at a state level baking competition <laughs> by simply just asking the judge if I could partake. Okay, what state? Did you party, challenge him to this? If you were a decent baker. You can probably medal in a baking competition. 99% of the people who enter these competitions are mostly older women <gasps> who can Ooh. only cook with diabetic level ingredients no. and no, haven't really tasted so anything wrong. without the taste of a cigarette travesty, burn on their travesty tongue travesty to the just, for the, to the last 20, 30 system. years. So if you are a Stater. somewhat decent baker, I strongly beg of you to please, please, please Become a try judge. your hand at your state level competition. I guarantee you're probably going to place at least somewhere in, like, the top five. Depends on the state. Okay. I'm not happy. I'm not happy First of all, I think that the stuff that comes out of state fairs in the baking, like, realm Mm -hmm. is all the best things in the world. Mm -hmm. Like, pies and cookies and cream pies and all of the deliciousness. So, first of all, I just love all of that at any fair. Right. 
And second of all, diabetic? No. No, 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 no. Sugar's fine. Those are fine. like really great, be they women or men, who's ever like putting forth their delicious right. baked goods. I'm not getting diabetic vibes at all. Yeah, I don't know. You are being, I had to Google this word, duplicitous. <laughs> David, you are being just a little bit duplicitous in what you are talking about. I think it depends on what state you're in where you can just go up and say, hey, can I be a judge? Like, yeah, I yeah. think it depends. Like, if you're, like, in Iowa or Kansas, probably if you're in New York or, like, m- like Florida, they'll probably look at you a little weird. But I don't know. I mean, I don't, I've never done that before. Normally, people ask me to judge things. I don't go and, like, ask to judge. Um, also, duplicitous. I don't agree with you. What, they're putting cottage cheese and applesauce well, in or the buckle? They're putting Neuf... What's the green? Neuf Chatel. They're putting Neuf and Chatel? Neuf Chatel. Neuf Chatel. They're definitely not Neuf chatel This is at the state fair. This is just a little bit ridiculous. Yeah. I competed in one of these once. I was 25 years old. It was it was brought to you by Chevron in the greater Los Angeles area. Nice. Did you and win? I thought you were going to win $50,000 cash. Turns out it was $50,000 worth of Chevron gasoline, but I digress. That's so good. Did you it was win? It a tailgate challenge. No, no, no. And I submitted, oh, I remember the recipe. It was like you had to cook with Chevron ingredients. Um, It was a a Dr. Pepper barbecue sauce, like Flamin' Hot Cheeto, Crested Onion Ring, Western Bacon Cheeseburger kind of situation. That all sounds amazing. I showed up to the live cook-off. It was at the Coliseum at a USC football game. And the judge was Charles O'Lalia, the chef who opened Mam Sir, James Beard Award-winning restaurant. Right, love Mam Sir. Uh, And then Rodney Pete, who Mm -hmm. was a quarterback that finished second in the Heisman voting. Um, But anyways, uh, the type of women that he's describing, right? Like he's like, oh, these old women – they showed up. It was me and four of them. They all make a full-time living on these circuits wow. of competitive live cooking competitions Sick. held by brands. And, like, they all came in with, like, sashes and medals. They looked like five-star generals. And they wiped <laughs> the floor with my ass. Yeah. And literally, like, this one, wow. I remember she brought her own deep fryer and was like, I thought it said that we weren't allowed to have our own equipment. She was like, rookie, huh? Yeah, I just wrote them a little appeal, and they allowed me to bring this fryer because of my contract with Hormel. And I was just like, what? And I got rocked. So, no, I have nothing but respect for those people. Me too. And Me three. No, no not, nothing wrong with having diabetes, but I don't think they're <laughs> baking for diabetics. <laughs> no. That was crazy. That's a crazy story, Josh. Yeah, yeah. And then Rodney Pete stole my hat because I wore a UCLA hat, and he stole it. And so, Rodney Pete, if you're listening, and I know you are, <laughs> I know you're out there. Give me that hat back. <laughs> and, Rodney, we want to know if you think baking is a science, so please let us know <laughs> at your earliest convenience. <laughs> uh, Jesse, thank you so much thank for joining so us much. today. Thank you guys for having me. It was really fun. Of course, of course. Everyone check out Jesse's cookbook, and the name of that is... Salty, Cheesy, Herby, Crispy, Snackable Bakes. Uh, thank you so much for listening to Hot Dog is a Sandwich. We got new audio-only episodes every Wednesday, and the video comes out on Sundays. If you want to be featured on Opinions or Like Casseroles, hit us up at 833-DOGPOD1. Our number again is 833-DOGPOD1. And for more Mythical Kitchen, check out our other videos. We launch uh, new ones every week. You know the deal. We'll see you all next time. Bye! Bye!